there. Okay, here we are. Hi, everybody. I'm just going to try and get the chat set up in a way that I can see it. Um, and then we'll get going here. We're getting our first thunderstorm of the year just started. I was like, what's that rumbling noise? Uh, so I'm hoping it's not going to interfere with the internet quality, uh, but we'll find out. Um, that's the place. Oh, oh, chat. Okay, so hopefully this is going to work. I always have trouble getting the chat to go in the right places. Uh, maybe that will happen. Um, hmm. On my watching page, it says it's still waiting for free fiddle lessons. I'm here. I'm talking. Hopefully it'll catch up with me soon. I'm just going to pretend like it's working. <clears throat> and okay, cool. So, um, I'm going to start by playing some tunes. I, um, uh, I think I'll start by actually playing the tune for the lesson that I released last week, Timothy Clifford's, uh, which is really fun, Jake. I've been enjoying play. <laughs> Um, so interesting. I have a different tune in my head. Um, here we go, Julia. Come on. I have the old red barn, um, which is also in G, also a jig. Timothy Clifford's. There it is. Okay. So here we go. I'll try to get my fingers and everything on this on the screen. Oh no, <laughs> the old red barn came back. They're, boy, they're very close. Okay, Timothy Clifford's. I don't know the last thing. 
poured as hard as it's pouring right now. Hopefully it's not uh, loud in the video. It's loud in my house. Um, and I hope that this is uploading. I guess I'll find out. Maybe I'll look quickly and see if I can see any people emailing me and being like, uh, where are you? I don't. That's assuming that my email is able to download <laughs> in this storm. Um, well, wow, April showers, spring, May flowers. We're going to have lots of flowers. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and focus and not be distracted by the like monsoon that's happening outside. Um, Margaret Tunes. Um, uh, another tune that's really been stuck in my head, um, though I've been calling it by the wrong name, I've been thinking it was Huey Shorty's, it's actually um, uh, Father Kelly's Reel in G. Uh, it's one that I've been thinking about a lot and had in my head recently. <laughs> tunes do I have on my list here? I've got my 
favorite recent teaching tunes list? Oh, that one I'm not sure I've played. <laughs> I say this every month. I'm like, I don't think I've played this for a thing. And then I go and I add the tunes uh, into the description afterwards and catalog them on the website. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you played this for the last, like, three months. <laughs> but we'll try it again. Maybe, maybe this time I uh, hadn't been doing it. Uh, this is an Irish tune, a reel, um, called The Ladies' Pantalettes. And it's a really fun, really nice tune. <laughs> loss for tunes uh today which is no good um i do also i have a plan um to i need to change my strings and a student was talking about being like sort of fearful about change, changing strings today and i was like oh i could do that during the office hours on video um so for any of you who haven't changed strings before um or anybody else who might be watching later um there's a little something about that so I'm going to do that, but I'm going to save that to the end-ish so that, um, or for a little later anyways, so that I um, don't need to then be tuning my violin all the time while I'm finishing the office hours. Um, so we'll play a few more tunes first. Um, what am I in the mood to play? Um, I did write a tune yesterday. Maybe I'll play that for you. Um, it's an F. And um, you can play it either as like a march or a slow reel or a, a like faster reel. Um, I was intending it as a march, but it's kind of nice as a reel too. It's a little hard to play as a reel. It's a little tricky. Um, as long as I can remember how it starts. <laughs> Sicamore. 
There it is. The sycamore. Um, still not seeing anybody out there in the big old world. Um, hmm. But perhaps what we will do then is maybe I will do the string changing business. Um, yeah, I don't know. It could be this storm. I'm not actually uploading anything at all to the old YouTube. Um, let me just look one other place, see what I see. Um, hmm, yeah, not looking super. Oh, look, there it I am. Okay, great, cool. So I'm uploading something. Sorry for all the uh, exciting things that uh, means I'm basically like just talking at the screen for those of you who are watching later. Huh. Oh, now I have a viewer. Oh, I think it's myself. <laughs> oh, yay. Somebody's watching. Oh, it's me. I am so awesome. I can watch myself on YouTube. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play one more tune. Uh, it's going to be a polka. And it's going to be great. And then um, I think at that point, um, maybe I'll play two more because I didn't think about that waltz. Um, and then I'll change some strings live on YouTube and um, we'll call it a night, I think. So the polka uh, is called the Galen. <laughs> advice I give about um, double stops of like, oh, just try strings that are around. And uh, sometimes you try the right ones and sometimes you try the wrong ones. So uh, usually, uh... <laughs> well, I can't remember what I did. That, not so nice. Anyways, when you don't like it, you can either do it a lot again, like I just did, or you can try something else. Um, I also, yeah, I saw this waltz on my list. Um, it's the O'Donnells, um, written by Bob McQuillan, and it's a really lovely tune, if I can remember just how it goes. Ah, there it is. <laughs>
there's the O'Donnell's. I'm seeing something here from Maria. Uh, oh dear, I'm not sure which the last tune was at the time when you wrote um, wrote that comment, Maria. Um, but it will be in the all the names will be in the um, program notes or the comment whatever that box is called the information box or whatever later with links to the tunes so you'll be able to figure it out then um and um if it was just the polka that i played right before that it was the galane <laughs> i can tell you that much um which is when i noticed the comments so maybe um that tune though um the o'donnell's made me think about the tune by vince o'donnell who uh, is one of the O'Donnells who was getting married at the time that the last tune was written. Um, anyways, Vince O'Donnell wrote this lovely, lovely, lovely waltz, one of my favorites, um, called Penobscot Memory, about a time visiting this area, um, Penobscot Bay, and spending some time here. So I'll play that one too, and then I will change strings, and um, that'll be great. Um, <laughs>
Sorry for the unplanned break in the middle of that tune. I just ran right into the coffee table here with my bow. I'm sure it's happened to some of you all before. Um, okay, now for the long-awaited uh, string change session. Let me pull my strings out. I have a new package. Oh, and let me get, I need a pencil. Okay, so I use um, helicore strings. Ooh, backwards. Fancy. Uh, I was thinking I could like turn it around. That won't work. Um, I use these helicore strings by Daddario. I love them. Um, they're quite loud. Some people don't love them. Um, but I like them because they're not very expensive. They sound good on my fiddle. They're really bold. Um, they hold up well for cross tuning because they're a steel core rather than a synthetic core. Um, which also is what makes them kind of louder and more powerful. Um, anyways, it works for me. I love them. And I find I can do what I want to do with them. Other people prefer other things. I do get the set. This is uh, H310W. The W stands for wound. I get it with a wound E string. It's a couple dollars more. Um, but the sound of the wound E string works better. You don't, um, sometimes on strings that aren't wound E's, you can kind of catch the string at a little bit of an angle. And it can be, we can get this high shrill squeaking sound that's not nice. Um, so I'm going to open my package of strings. And let's see, I'll start by taking out the E string from this package here. Okay. Um, and I think the A string is also in these. Um, come with a little protector. Hold it up to the camera. Uh, that should be the camera, but apparently it's not. Ooh, that's hard. Um, this little plasticky bit on the string which slides up and down, and that's to go on top of the bridge to help keep the E string from digging into the bridge. Now, um, you can, if you have a little piece of parchment or something on your bridge, um, you that will help keep the E string from digging into the bridge. It's just because it's so thin. Uh, so you can just slide that little green bit all the way off. Uh, and some, some strings come with those, some strings don't, but a lot of strings do. So, um, on this set of strings, um, strings are color coded based on their kind. So um, this blue end, right? Yeah, blue. Um, and the other strings will be blue and yellow at this end. And that tells us um, that it's helicores, as well as the green winding tells us in this case that it's an E string. And that will match what's on my fiddle. Um, the other really common ones are dominance. People use those a lot for fiddle playing. Um, and those all have purple ends at the peg and then different colors um, at the uh, the tailpiece. So I have my E string out. Whoops, I'm gonna drop it on the ground. That'll be really helpful. Um, the biggest thing you wanna do is, um, unless you have a very good reason, you wanna just take one string off at a time. The reason for that being that you've got the sound post inside underneath the treble side of your bridge. Um, and sometimes if you take all, all the strings off, not only does the bridge come off and you can, and the tail piece will come loose and can scratch things around um, and the bridge can move and that's a pain, um, but the sound post can also fall down uh, because of the lifting of the pressure. Usually it doesn't, but it can happen. And that usually should be set by a professional um, with the right tools to get in there and spike it and or get it out and spike it and slide it back in in just the right spot um everything bridge position and the sound post position like moving it a millimeter can make big differences in the sound so it's a pretty delicate system so i'm going to unwind my e string i like to pluck it while i'm doing it just to make sure i'm dealing with the right string and, and i just pull it off I'm going to save this string for the um, guaranteed situation where I'm somewhere and somebody breaks their E string and is like, oh no, I've broken my E string. What am I going to do? And I say, oh, I've got an old one in my case. You can have it. So here's my package of old strings. 
that I will add this to. And it's good because I think I gave away my last used E string recently. I usually have a stockpile of them, but I run run low. Oh, I'm missing my cleaning cloth. I take advantage of string changing as a time when I can get like under the fingerboard a little bit more and wipe some of the rosin. I'm just using a plain old purple. This used to be a piece of a shirt. Uh, I suppose it still is. Used to be a, a shirt. Um, use it as a chance to get some of the rosin. I'm just cleaning uh, with this cloth. I'll try to show you under the strings, under the fingerboard. And of course this I can do anytime, but it can be hard to get under the strings with enough force. So I just am going for it since I have it. I have some extra rosin stuck on there, so I'm not really going to get all that off. Some of that's pretty caked on down there. Some people leave their rosin on, leave rosin on their violin. Uh, I don't tend to, and it does, it can get kind of stuck on there. It can get to a point where you can't get it off without some chemicals, which are not great for your varnish. Okay, so now is going to be the exciting part. Um, I'm going to put the ball of this string. There it is. Hold it still. There you go. The ball of the string is going to go into the little hook right here. Let's see if I can even do it without looking at it, just looking at it in the camera. That's going to be tricky. Helps to get it turned the right way. Okay, so there it goes in. There, it's stuck on the hook. All right, so now I'm going to keep tension on that, holding onto the string. It doesn't really matter where it falls on the bridge yet. I'm going to go up to the peg head and actually I'm going to put this, take the string out for a second so I can show you the peg head. So this is the E string peg. Um, you can see, I can pull it out and it um, has some lubrication um, at the tip and further up the shaft. That is what helps it turn in the peg box. If my pegs were really sticky or slidey, um, now is a time when I could put something on the peg um, really easily, but my pegs are fine. Um, one thing I've heard uh, somebody says ivory soap is like the best thing for whether that's sticky or slippy, it's the right texture, I don't know. Um, I have some peg dope that I've got someplace that um, I use mostly if my pegs are sticky, but my pegs are fine. So the trick is to get the string in that little hole when it's in the peg box. And we're gonna have to maneuver here around the A string. So I'm gonna get it started and talk about what I'm doing and then I'll show you what it looks like once I'm started. Um, so I'm gonna put this string back in the hook. And then, um, so I'm sneaking the string for the E string in between the peg, the peg box wall and the A string, which are right there. And I've got it in now. I'll show you what that looks like. So it looks like, oh, this is going to be hard to show you. My finger's going to be in the way. Uh, it probably just popped out. Oh, no, it's still in there. It just popped out of the, the far end. So you can see there's the A string and here's the string next to it. And I poked it through the hole so it hits the back of the um, peg box. That will give me a little bit of play. And then as I start turning it, and it's come out of the end, so it's going to be a little funky here, but as I start turning it, that end will come poking up. There it is. Still, it's hard to see. You should have more light on this, really. There's the end. So I usually go, um, here, I'll just put some tension on this with my knee. This is exciting. Um, I usually go have one string wrap on the sort of the inside away from the pig box wall. And then I wrap all the rest going in towards the wall like this. And that should leave me with a nice amount um, and the end of the string pulling um, pulling the peg like in into the pig box and keeping it snug. So I'm gonna stick my ball end back in if I can. Oh yeah, great. Wow, that worked out pretty well. Um, so then I do this little triangle maneuver um, to keep tension on both ends so it doesn't pop out 
of either side. And I'm going to hold that triangle. I'm going to actually back up a little bit because this was a little bit sloppy since I was doing it without looking at it. And I, not that it probably really matters, but I'm a little bit precise how I like things to be sometimes. Uh, I think it's probably good for my fiddle playing. Well, I'm not that precise or it'd be better for my fiddle playing. Okay. So I'm getting wound on again. I'm winding now up against the peg wall. I'll turn it for a second and show you what that looks like. There it is, partway wound. I wonder if I can do this and keep it in the screen. I'll try. So winding on some more. You can see it's winding right next to the peg wall. And as the thing gets stronger here, here comes the cat. He's going to investigate. So there, I've got just a little bit of tension on here. Now I'm going to pause and I'm going to look at, oh, I'm going to do the thing I forgot. This is what always happens. And I'm going to look at where the string's falling. So string's falling in good places, but I'm actually going to take it out. And there's so little tension on it. I can just lift it out of the um, groove on the bridge, which you can't really see. It doesn't look like. There, you can see it. Well, if the angle's just right. Um, and I'm going to take my little pencil, and this is a mechanical pencil. You can use whatever. Um, and I'm going to just put a little bit of graphite in the groove, both here and up at the nut. And that will just help the string to move. The cat's going to be very helpful and knock my strings off the table. Thank you, Cricket. Um, so I'm going to put just a little graphite in there. I'm going to slide that green, that green protector up and put the string back in the notch. And I like to put the protector so it's not, oops, it looks like it fell. Oh no, it's still there. Uh, so it's just past the top of the, get out of here, go on, go on. Oh. Um, so it's just past the, this, the cat loves string changing day. If you ever need to entertain your cat, he's got the E-string and he's going away with it. This is going to be like my best web cam thing ever. Okay. Try to secure this E-string. Put it a little deeper in the packaging, apparently. Maybe I'll put it next to me so it's less obvious up there on the table. Okay. Anyway, so we've got the protector on the bridge. Still very out of tune. We're going to go up to the... I'm going to actually I'm going to loosen it and pop the string out of the nut like so. And I'm going to do the same thing up the nut. Put a little bit of graphite in the groove. And that will help the string pass through. Do more here where I can actually see it. Okay, and now I'll tighten the string up by fitting some grooves. And here again, I'm going to pull on the string, checking it while I'm going up. So very small, this is where you can break your new string. So very small turns, and I'm holding the neck very securely here so I can push in on the peg against my other hand. And uh, I have the fiddle sort of like in my stomach and legs to hold it in place. And I'm comparing just to the other string. You could use a tuner at this point. can play with. Here, go play with that on the floor. Really fun. Okay, and I'm going to also, while I'm here, I'm going to give myself some space. I was getting kind of down on fine tuner, and I just loosen that a little bit, and now raise it back up. All right. Next string, A string. I'm going to take it off. comes. All right. I'm going to curl it up so the cat doesn't get it. Not that that worked particularly well the last time. Now the cat's playing with a little pull off the string package, so that's keeping him happy. Oh, 
I say as he gets closer again. Hi, you. All right, I'm going to clean. This time I'm going to do the graphite before I put the string on, which is way easier. So I'm going to put it up here and down here. And really, you probably get all that you need to at this point, uh, but I'll keep changing the strings on camera just for the fun of it. Uh, and then I'll show you some checks at the end. So if you want to skip to the end and see um, just the things that I do to make sure that everything's looking like it's still set up correctly, um, I'll show you those. Oh, so yeah, this A string has a plastic protector on it. Maybe I'll leave this one on. I usually take it off, but maybe I'll leave it on. Never know. Maybe it'll be handy. Okay, and I'm putting the A string on. It's the hardest to see because it's the furthest up in the peg head. So you have to just turn the peg so you can see it and then poke that string through. Luckily, I also like to sew, so I have lots of needle threading experience. Um, and then wind one on the outside and then in towards the inside. Make the triangle and wind it on until it starts to get tight. And uh, here it's not in the bottom. It's popped out, so I'm just going to pop it over. It doesn't really want to go. There it goes. And I'm going to slide that protector up so it's on. And this is the last one. My Eastern groove is kind of deep. I have, oh, well, I had a protector on there. The, oh, no, it's still there. Anyways, the groove is a little deep, and uh, so it's nice to have the, the protector there. Now I'm going to type my A string. And again, small changes. Pretty close. Checking my fine tuner's got plenty of space. That's too sharp. Going to the fine tuner and. <sighs> Sorry. Loosening it. That's pretty good. Uh -oh. Except better to tune to the D string because the E strings have been put on. I need string again already. Clean things off. Where's my cloth? There we go. I'm going to graphite both sides. I'm going to take out my D string. This one won't have a protector on it, just the string. D string's got the yellow end, you can see. And then this, this is the blue and white stripes that I was talking about. Yeah, you can see them. That tells us that this is a helicor. Cat is really into this. Yes. <laughs> Here, meet Cricket, everyone. Oh, hi, Cricket. <laughs> okay, so the D string's easy because it's all by itself on that side. You're putting it on, it's on top of everything, you can see it. So I'm gonna, I've poked it all the way through, I'm winding once on the inside and then moving towards the wall, winding it on. All right, it's really helpful to see this with the cat in the middle of everything, huh? So here we go. Checking my grooves I'm in on both sides. So now my hands are turning out. enough for now. We'll get the uh, tuning fork involved. Just so now I'll do the G string, last one. If I can't even get it to come off. There we go. Okay. And oh yep. Yeah. Clean. And keep going. You are full of it. Um, graphite. 
Maybe he's out of food and that's why he's being a pest. I gave him a lot of food not all that long ago. Here, she wants this little piece of string package. That's pretty exciting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Fun times at our house tonight. And I'll put the G-string down here in the hook. And again, I'll show you just what those are look like close up. You can probably look. And different tail pieces will be a little bit different, but that's what this one with the built-in fine tuners looks like. Um, sometimes you have to set them in some other kind of little groove. Um, occasionally you'll run into something that needs to be a loop, not a ball. And then you can actually pop the ball out of the string. But um, I like this tail piece with the built-in fine tuners. I find that very handy. So I'm winding the G-string on. And again, with a G-string like the E-string, you do have to be kind of, can be a little tricky to get it in there next to the D-string. So sometimes you have to pull the peg out a little bit when you're starting, like pull it out of the peg box to get into that hole. And I make my triangle and I tighten up the string. And it's easy at first, because I don't need to pay attention. And then as it starts, oops. And here, okay, there I had a little bit of a problem. I was like too close up against the peg box wall. It's kind of shifted now. Uh, so I loosened it up a little bit and pulled it, pulled the peg out to give myself more space to wind on. Into the grooves, both sides. And tuning up. It's not beautiful tuning, but we'll fix that in a minute. I really don't want you to eat these. I know you think it's super fun. I think the cat can like tell the sound of changing strings and will come from wherever he is in the house to uh, investigate because he knows how much fun it is. <laughs> not helping because it's not back into its little loop. Okay, put those away and then we should be done with the cat toy portion of the evening. Okay, so now I'm going to use my tuning fork or you could use a tuner. There's an A. Hey, I'm actually pretty close. Come on. <laughs> I know, you like being a TV star. Okay, live on YouTube. That's actually kind of incredible how in tune that is. Oh, not so incredible. So I'm gonna. And of course, I. Whoops, there my pig slipped. I could be doing this in the same position that I had done it before. <laughs> Um, but I'm doing it now from the usual holding position. So there you have new strings. Um, I'm just going to check a couple of things. Uh, they'll sound a little bit funny, these strings, for the first day or so. It's another reason I like these strings is they settle pretty quickly. They won't need much tuning up to pitch. Um, and they will sound normal pretty quickly. Other strings, sometimes it takes them like almost a week to get really settled in. Um, so I'm going to check the position of my bridge. My bridge is just a little bit warped. Sorry, Richard. Uh, I really, I made it better and then it got a little warpy again. Um, but it is more or less a right angle, so I'm going to leave it alone. I don't think it's just bent a little bit because it's a bent a little bit, not the fault of the positioning of the bridge or of the violin maker. Um, and um, the other thing I can check is just to make sure that there's equal distance on both sides of the bridge and the bridge didn't get pulled out of alignment. It looks really good. I did one string at a time. I think I'm good. I could like measure it with a little piece of paper, make a mark and check that it's the same on both sides, but I'm feeling pretty confident that that's fine. Um, so I'll just Check it out. Sounds good.
All right, thanks for coming, uh, tuning in, or watching this later. Um, well, I'm going to be trying to get new videos up a little faster than I've been getting them up. Uh, I got to get a bunch of stuff together recently, so it's uh, in the in the works. Um, but uh, yeah, check out the website for um, the cataloging of all the tunes and where you can find the tunes um, from these, either both from these um, office hours and from our normal videos. So. Uh, we'll see you next month in May for another Office Hours.